week's episode of Walkthrough Wednesday. I'm Bradley and we really appreciate you uh, sticking with us through this series. I think we're on episode 7 now and uh, we're back in the shop this week. Last week we were on location at Power Tour. I think we showed you some footage from Darlington, Atlanta, hanging out with our friends Rutledge and all those guys down there. Um, feels good to be home. Feels good to be back. So we're starting out this week. We got a lot of project updates for you. The first one is our 70 Chevelle project. And Brian, I'm going I'm to wave in here to talk about this bumper. Brian's been hard at work. He's finished up the top piece of the bumper, and as well as the lower splitter design here. And working on a grill right now. Yep. Working on an idea. Working on an idea. Yeah, idea. So, trying to meet Bradley's drawing is a, a tall task. This is the fun relationship that I have as the designer with our fabricators. That they really don't like me, but we love him. Here's. Here's what we're going for, and this is about where we are right now. So we're plotting out, plotting out the size of our entirely custom grill. Everything in the front end, uh, probably minus the headlight bezels, will be 100% custom fab. Pretty much. Um, which is really going to set this Chevelle apart. Long road ahead, but it's going to be a cool car when we get there. Show us the stock grill. Stock grill, which is missing the trim pieces, but. The big difference that we're going for is that the stock grill has the centerpiece that actually protrudes forward out of the car. And we're going for a more flush look so the trim bezels around the grill openings will stick out a hair farther than the bracket piece that goes between. Correct. Uh, so overall, this point right here is out further flush so you don't have such a such a fat lip yeah, yeah. 70 style bumper yeah, the stock on. bumper had a had a real wide shelf on the bumper so we're kind of just taking that away trying to make it a little more sleek and modern yeah and this big progress that's, that's my vision i don't know if it lines up with your oh i think we got the same vision <laughs> it's close enough all right thank you brian <laughs> for all you've done tony i'm walking on the windshield <laughs> So what we've got here is a 17 uh, Petty's Garage Mustang that was completed, sold, and made its way back here because as a lot of folks do when they buy one of our cars uh, that they didn't have built for themselves, they like to send it back and, and do some custom work uh, to really personalize it. So we've got the engine out, uh, doing an upgraded cam. Right, Ben? Cams and headers. Cams and headers. Um, and hair rod. Oh, yeah. See the headers right there. Look at how nice. Full air ride system, so she'll uh, drop to the ground. Oh, here we go. See the bags right there. Yeah, cool build. Grab her blue, always a popular color. What kind of cans we got in there, Holt? Uh, stock work coming out now. The comp cans is what's going back in. So this is a custom grind uh, blower cam uh, from our friends at Comp Can. They custom grind them for us, uh, specific for this application. So we get everything uh, that we actually want per spec with our engine builders, as well as uh, make our tuner happy when he gets on the dyno and start trying to make some power numbers. Right. And it helps give people that low that they like a lot with the sound. And New project introduction this week. Uh, we have this uh, Hellcat. What year is the Hellcat? 2018. Brand new. Brand new Hellcat from our friends in Texas. Um, and this gives us a great opportunity to show you one of our favorite upgrades for these cars. Walk further here to the rear trailer. One of the biggest complaints you get with high horsepower cars, especially the new Mopars, is that uh, they wheel hop. So we found that the best way to reduce wheel hop is to replace the stock cradle bushes with these polyurethane replacements. The stock are rubber, they have like a hollow core, um, not as robust. So we press those out. We put these polyurethane bushings in, and that does a great job of reducing wheel hop. Uh, we've got the motor out. That's going to get built to a 426. It'll be about a thousand horsepower at the crank build. Uh, paint work, wheels, tires. Will, what am I missing? Uh, custom interior, eight-point roll interior. cage. Yep. Oh, roll cage. I forgot about the roll cage. Yeah. Interior is all out. So uh, this is a full-on build, very extensive, no stone left unturned. Um, basically, will be a street-legal race car when it's all said and done. 
Uh, if we head over here, uh, we've got the 5.7 Hemi on the frame, ready to go back in the Jeep now. Uh, so, obviously a much big difference from the stock 3.6 V6 motor, and is this one getting supercharged too? This one's getting supercharged right. as well, as yep. well as we built the tranny, Bradley. Oh, really? Okay. So, so it's upgraded to a uh, Nag 1 style transmission right. to hold the extra horsepower when we push through it. Yep. So, we get that question a lot, what do you guys do with transmission if we need to? We, we build up, upgrade the transmission ourselves, and... Uh, yeah, it should be a pretty fun meet when it's all said and done. All you gotta do is pop it back together. <laughs> engines out of cars. We got a lot, of, a lot of cars sitting here either waiting for their engines to go back in or just got them pulled. Um, this one is a uh, RT charger. So it came with a 5.7 Emmy, but what we've got here is a crate 6.4 block built to a 426, ready to go in the car. So I would call that a sleeper because when we get all said and done, um, you know, if you're going down the street, somebody's just going to think that you've got a stock 5.7 RT charger, which is a, you know, a sporty car in its own right, but not, not this sporty. So that's a pretty cool build. So we're here this week in our CNC room. Uh, we haven't spent much time in here on Walkthrough Wednesday, but we got some cool stuff to show you guys that I, I think you'd really be interested. The first thing here. Uh, is this was really cool we actually had the hot rod power tour stop here uh, for a lunch stop last Friday and when we all came in on Monday we realized that a lot of you guys had left really nice notes for us on the whiteboard up here in the, in the CNC room um, so thank you for that we're glad everybody had a great time and it was it was such a cool experience for us to be able to host so many cool hot rods at one time um, what we got here is obviously a raw piece of aluminum you know chucked up ready to ready to go here. We, we do a lot of our own parts manufacturing in-house. Um, what will come out of there? Yeah, individual pieces that this is all for our uh, our fuel pumps. So they'll get made into a Walbro fuel pump and that's the finished product right there. Um, these are available on our website fetish-garage.com and I'm gonna walk over here Tell you guys a little story that you may have seen on a previous video on how this is uh, a superior product. So we ran into our friends from the tuning school down in uh, where were we at? Darlington, South, South Carolina. Carolina. That's where we were. Darlington, South Carolina, and they had a 5.7 charger, and they had a fuel pump go out because it broke the modified basket. I believe is that is that a pro-charge car? Uh, yes, a lot of supercharger applications don't actually upgrade the fuel pump. And right. so uh, you end up modifying the basket to add an extra pump or something in there. And we make this drop-in yeah. unit in its place. So what's great about no ours is you don't have to modify the basket at all. Obviously this is for like a 5.7 like a Hemi. See the fuel pump, drops right in, stock basket, and we don't have any issues out of these. So just a little bit of you know how we manufacture parts in-house. Coming up to see what's going on in our OEM shop today. Uh, looks like Mitch has got a Camaro supercharging. This is the primary thing for the day. We're putting the uh, Edelbrock 2650 on a 2018 Camaro. Uh, we'll see what this little girl would do here. Um, this is one of our new production Camaros, right? One of the new production Camaros going to Wayne Thomas Chevrolet in Asheboro. Uh, about 75% done with the install. Got pulled off, come over here and look at this over here. Yeah, let's so, check this out. Doing with some headlights today. Doing with some headlights here and a uh, little bit of Bluetooth activation here. Oh man, that's cool. But I'm gonna leave it right there about pity blue. I like it, that's awesome. You just control that with your phone right there. Right there with a little app on the phone. That's awesome. So, if you guys want rainbow colored headlights, Mitch has got to put them in. There Check it out, go. that's really cool. And then we can actually go to a, Oh. Seizure. <laughs> Full on seizure. <laughs> but I still like the Petty Blue. Thanks, Mitch. We will check back in with you next week. See how oh, God. see how everything's progressing. I don't see if anything fun going on in the body shop. There, Bradley. We've got a 2018 PG2 Petit Garage Challenger. Uh, supercharged, exhaust, paint, wheels, tires, and just completed, ready for its owner to pick it up tomorrow. So that's always exciting. Always a good day when we pick up. So we got 
yet another project update for you. Uh, a lot of those when we skip a week here. This is our 68 Mala Camaro project uh, hitting the booth. So, body work is just about complete. I think uh, get ready to spray the floor. We're going to run a line in the bottom and then we're going to base it. And then we're going to rip everything off, drop the plastic there, and wipe it down, and then paint it. So getting close. Yeah. So car mounted on a rotisserie, so you can fully rotate it. I don't know if you can see that uh, here off the video, but you can rotate the vehicle, uh, so you can actually paint the bottom side and inside of it from uh, proper angles. Makes it a lot easier on our We've guys everything, here. Everything seam sealed, prevent any kind of moisture from getting in. Awesome. Looks really good. So. Big controversy with all the Mopar guys on the internet right now seems to be what to do with these things. Um, obviously, they're little yellow, you know, protective pieces that come and are supposed to be removed by the dealer. Like it says right there, to be removed by dealer. But we want to know: Do you guys like these? Do you think it's cool when people leave them on? Do you hate it when people leave them on? Tell us which way you go. Comment below. Let us know. You know, are they stupid? Are they cool? One or the other, and uh, we're really interested to see what you think. So. There we go. So a sneak peek at what's on our dyno right now. Uh, this is a this is what we've been showing you guys this about every week. This is the 2017 twin turbo uh, Mustang that we've been working on. Look up under the hood here. Uh, we're expecting over 900 at the rear tires with this car. Uh, should be running it first thing in the morning, so you guys will see that video. Um episode of walkthrough wednesday as always we really appreciate everybody watching uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel if you like our videos hit that pettis garage logo right there uh, if you missed last week's we were on location for power tour had a lot of fun with that video check it out right here uh, make sure you share this you know tell everybody we appreciate it um, if you got some cool stuff you want to bring in to get on one of these videos always open to that too so uh, we'll see you next week thanks everybody